GPS bike computers are a really good accessory to have. They've got so much functionality these days. Thought it'd be good to do a video to give you some tips on how to get the best from your bike computer. Garmin are a partner here at EMBN. Yes, I'm on EMBN duty today. There's my jersey, there's my e-bike. Uh, but of course, we're in Scotland and it's raining. So, I'll talk you through some of their devices, but these tips will hopefully help you out with any other brand's GPS bike computer. If you're in the market for actually buying your first GPS bike computer, there's some things to consider. So think about the size of the computer you want. So I'll go through a bit of a Garmin range. There's the 130, so super small, really nice and compact. Obviously you can tuck that up on the bars. It's not gonna get damaged. It's just really nice and small, super robust. But then the bigger you get, the more functionality they're gonna have. So this is the brand new Edge 830, loads of functionality, uh, top of the range. Then you've got the 1030, so that's a much bigger computer. Look at the size of the screen. So you can get a lot more information on there. If you're doing bigger rides, you can get a really detailed map on that big screen. Also, the size of it just means it's got a bigger battery in there. Another option you might want to consider is a watch. So you can get fitness tracker watches. They'll actually do a lot of functions and have a GPS device in there as well. This is the Garmin Phoenix. It does actually a lot of the same functions as these computers, but it's smaller and it's on my wrist. If you've got an older device, you might be surprised to find actually how usable these new devices are. Gone are the days of having to plug it into your computer with a USB to download things or get your data from your ride. Nowadays, most brands of GPS computers will actually sync wirelessly to your phone. So downloading your data within a few seconds of it in that stop button, but also preloading maps, things like that, all can be done wirelessly. It's worth thinking about where you're gonna mount your computer. I really like the Garmin mountain bike mount, so it just attaches to the bar there, and sort of just flips over the stem. So you mount your computer right above the stem. Obviously on the specialized e-bike, you really don't have many controls, it's just over here, so you don't have any screens. So that keeps the bars nice and clean and simple. Depends on your bike, obviously Bosch bikes, you might have that's the screen on there, so you might have to stick the computer over the stem anyway. Um, there are other options, so you can use the Garmin small amount to go onto the bar. Obviously that's just not centered. You can put it on the top tube, or you can get out front mount. So I think they're probably better suited to road bikes. However, if you're going for a long ride and you need to use an external battery pack, well Garmin have the option to have the out front mount, mount your computer on top and then the battery underneath if you need mega battery power. So Garmin works really well with the specialized bike. So it connects versus the Anti uh, Plus, so wirelessly, and it will connect to your mission control app. So it will give you information on your screen or even on your watch, uh, things like your battery level, um, your, the mode you're riding in. You can also switch between modes, so support modes. So even on the watch, you can press the button and go up straight up to turbo if you want. The Garmin will also connect to your Shimano electric system, so the DI2 electric gears. It will give you what gear you're in, your cadence, things like that, all the information up there, and can remove the need for that Shimano DI2 screen. Also, it will connect to your steps motor, so give you, again, that battery level, all the information, and you can use that nicely, along with, of course, the navigation you've got on that computer. Commute navigation works really well with e-bikes because you can really dig into the details of that route that you're going to ride. So maybe how steep that trail is going to be, but also what surface and actually what grade of trail it is. So you can work out if the trail is going to be super technical, maybe loose surface and really steep. It might not be the ones to try and get your e-bike up. You can maybe reroute it to find something that isn't going to be hike a bike, something you can ride up. With some GPS bike computers, you can actually customise them. You can with Garmin's, use their Garmin IQ app. So download apps on your phone that are specific to that device and then sync them over. So things like Komoot for planning and mapping rides and getting them onto your computer. So you've got super easy to find navigation. You've got Strava, so you can see segments and find courses. Also Trail Forks, a really good one for that. So if you're out riding, you want to find some trails in maybe a place you don't know very well, get Trail Forks in your Garmin, find all the trails there are. 
then you can start digging into the settings on your computer to work out what you want to display when you're riding. With Garmin's you've got different activity profiles as well, so there's my e-mountain bike, indoor for turbo trainers, uh, mountain and road. And you can have different displays for each different activity. So e-mountain, go in there. My first screen I've got my speed, my timer, distance, elevation, total ascent, things like that. I'll probably ride a little bit and then I'll decide what I really need. It does change, uh, maybe in winter, I want to display the time the sun goes down, all those things. Also with Garmin's you can scroll through. So then I've got a navigation screen. If I'm following a course, that's the one I use predominantly. Then I've got an elevation profile to see what I've done, what's coming up. Uh, heart rate, if you've got one of those connected to it. And then right back to that first screen with my data on there. So it's probably worth going for a few rides, deciding what you want to display, what's most useful, and then trying to set it up. A lot of people just use their GPS bike computer for tracking their rides, so seeing where they've been, keeping track of their distances, putting on Strava, racing their mates, those type of things. I'll say it's well worth trying to dig into the navigation uh, usability of these things as well. I've talked about commute a little bit already, but I've been using that an awful lot for big rides or going somewhere that I don't really know plotting it out on my computer at home, can do it on your phone as well, and then syncing up with my computer and then literally following those really easy to use prompts and that map, sometimes you'll find some wicked trails you didn't know about. So there's all sorts of third party options for plotting your route and then get it onto your device. Some bike computers actually have their own sort of course building software on there. This Garmin Edge 830 does, but there's definitely other brands that will have that on there. So start digging into the settings. You might be able to do it even when you're out on the trail. You can start looking into what sensors you might want to add to your system as well. So often people have heart rate monitors, that's definitely something that I use. And then I hook that up to my uh, computer so I can see what's going on. And of course it will record all that information as well. Uh, speed sensors as well, you can stick a sensor around your hub, that'll give you a really accurate uh, display of what you're riding at. And of course, we can start talking about e-bikes as well, which I will go into into more depth in a, in a second. But some bikes, like these Specialized, have ANT Plus, so you can send information to your computer, which you can read. I'm gonna start digging into some of the features that are Garmin specific, but I'm sure other brands will have these as well. Uh, so Garmin have lots of safety and tracking features. One of those is incident detection. So using its accelerometer uh, and other things in there and the GPS, it basically it will tell if there's a violent stop and it will give you 30 seconds to then cancel that. But if you're hurt and you can't get to your phone, it will then send a message to your emergency contact. Group track is a really cool little feature as well. So if you've got connections on Garmin Connect, you can add them to your map. So basically see where they are on your ride in case that you're in a big group or maybe someone's lost, you can actually see where they are on there. Also more connected features like if you connect it to your phone, it will display the weather. What's the weather doing? It's raining. You can use your bike computer also to track your fitness. So I like to do it, hook up my heart rate monitor and see how hard I've worked on that ride. Then obviously it'll sync to my phone and my software on the computer. Basically keep track of how much I've been riding, how many calorie, calories I've been burning. And basically hopefully keep an eye on my fitness improving. Also some computers will give you an estimate of your VO2 max. So basically how fit you are. You can also use your bike computer to set yourself some goals. It might be a case of just saying that you want to ride a certain amount of time or distance in a week and it'll help keep you motivated or using third party software like Komoot or Strava to join a challenge. The Garmin has a climb pro feature. So if you're riding a pre-plotted course, when you get to a climb, an elevation graph will pop up with a little pin on it. So you can see your progress along it. Basically, you can pace yourself. You can see how big it is, how much distance is left, how many meters left to go. So that's a nice little feature. Uh, other features, you've got a bike alarm on the Garmin, so you can set that. And if anyone jumps on your bike and moves it, it will set off the alarm and then send you an alert to your phone as well. So, yeah, obviously not as safe as having your bike locked up, but it's nice to know if your bike is moving. The new Garmin Edge 530 and 830 have also got some really nice new features. So they measure your grit, your flow, and even count your jumps and tell you how big they are. So the grit is a score of how hard the trail is, basically how demanding that course is you've ridden. Your flow is your flow score. If you're riding really nice and smooth, you'll get a lower flow score. So the lower, the better. It's pretty cool to check that out. Jumps, pretty simple. It'll show you how long you've been in the air, how many jumps you've done on that ride, all sorts of cool stats. 
You might be able to connect your head unit also to other devices. So my Garmin will go with my Garmin Varia light. So basically on my head unit, I can control uh, what this light is doing, turn it off, turn it on. Also a rear light and a radar, so it will give you a warning if a car's coming up behind you. Uh, even it will connect to your Di2 Shimano gears. If you've got those electric gears, it will give you data on the screen. If you're in the market for buying a new GPS computer for your e-bike, I would definitely dig into the details, do your research to see how compatible they are, how much information you can get on your screen for the brand of bike you're riding, but also how usable they are. Of course, uh, they're always getting updated, so they may improve in the future. Even your old device may improve in the future. But things are getting so connected now that even you know, your phone is connected to your computer that's connected to the bike, they can be super useful. If you want to see some more videos whilst you're here on EMBN, click over there at the bottom for de-restricted versus restricted. Super cool video from the guys. And up there for one of Steve Jones's mad challenges. Just thumbs up if you like GPS devices and hit that subscribe button.